mindful. Look before you go. Yeah, I got that. And we try to cover up every possible thing that could scuff you, but if you find something that does wind up creating some red indicating fluid, um, you can see our, our crew. We've got first aid kits on board. They'll be more than happy to get you with a band aid or whatever you need to get you all squared away. And most importantly, let them know where so that we can go address whatever one we do understand was there. So you've just become a test passenger for us and found something. Um, so we operate this airplane in a very unique way. Uh, it, it is not certificated by the, the FAA to operate for commercial or for hire, it's called. Um, but because it's certificated experimental, so it's not a standard category airplane. It's important to understand that. But what that means is we maintain this. This is a military airplane that came out of military service. It was never used as a civilian airplane. That's why it doesn't have that type certificate. The way this airplane is maintained, the maintenance, the absolute, um, I mean, it's an iconic piece of history. We lovingly care for this airplane, much more so than your average airliner sitting out on the, on the flight. Um, we operate under a special exemption that's issued by the FAA that requires us to maintain conditions and limitations that create an equivalent level of safety, okay? So crew training, maintenance programs, mechanic training, instruction, recurrency, all those things that you'd see in a commercial air carrier operation, we also do. We just do it in a way that works and fits with this airplane very, very good. Okay, any questions on that? That's an important one. Um, all right, so we've never had to evacuate this airplane, never. However, in the highly unlikely event that it does occur, it's really important we have a brief and a plan, okay? Who's in the back today? Who's our back pass? Our members. All right, super. So you, you folks are going to be back in the back of the airplane in, in normal seats. Um, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But there's a few key exits that you need to be aware of. If we have to get out of the airplane and the cabin door that you came into to get to your seat is available, that's the most obvious choice. You're going to go out there. And more than likely, our lead scanner on this flight uh, will be first out and follow that person. All right. When you're out of the airplane, follow that individual to a safe location 50 to 100 yards away from the airplane. They'll pick where, depending on the conditions, um, and stay together. Okay? Do not scatter. That's, believe it or not, the most common way people get hurt in, a, in an airline world is when they do have to do a an evacuation and they scatter. That's when bad things can happen, so stay together. If you're in the front of the airplane, oh, excuse me, other exits in the back. So if the cabin door is not an option, you see these big plexiglass domes that our scanners use to, to scan out the left and right side? Those are removable. They have red latches that can be turned inside the airplane, and the entire dome can be pulled into the fuse box. Now you have this big circular hole and you can go right out. No problem at all. If for some reason those aren't available, this aft hatch back here by the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer is also a loose exit. And you can go out that. That's very large. There's a rope that's got knots in it that you'll want to toss out and then shimmy down the rope to get down from that position. In the highly unlikely event you're in the tail gun, which again, for a takeoff or landing, you're not going to be. But if for some reason you were back there, there's also an escape hatch back in the tail gun position. Okay, so that's the back of the airplane. Who's, my, uh, who's our passengers in the front of the airplane? All right, who's my bombardier? <laughs> bombardier, all right, awesome. It's the best seat in the house. Talk about that in a minute. Um, in the front of the airplane, again, like we talked about in the back of the airplane, the entrance hatch is the most likely place you're gonna go out of the airplane if we have to get out, okay? If for some reason that's not an option, we've got a large uh, hatch that's removed and open right next to the flight engine. That fellow's the, the, the person that sits backwards right behind the co-pilot. Big open square, plenty of room, easy to get out. If both of those are not available, uh, there are actual sliding windows by both pilot stations. And while they may look small, if you're highly motivated, <laughs> you will get out of it. <laughs> so those are the emergency exits in the airplane. Plan on that, know where you're going. Follow our crew, most importantly. On the nose, again, uh, RT will be the first person out of the airplane, and you'll follow him to a designated location and stay together. Okay? Any questions on the emergency event? All right. We all got a good plan. All right, let's talk a few more safety items. Um, first aid kit, we've got two first aid kits on board. There's one in the back and one in the front. As I mentioned before, if you get a little cut or you need some attention, uh, we'll help you out with whatever you need. Um, ask our crew. We have fire extinguishers. Uh, there's two in the back and two in the forward part of the airplane. They're, they're traditional um, red canister fire extinguishers, bottom pins up in the base of the plane. Okay, you'll see where they're at. If you're not sure, ask one of our crew. Uh, earplugs, if you have noise-sensitive ears, 
This airplane is a World War II bomber. It has big radial engines. It's by no means the loudest World War II airplane by a long shot. It's actually pretty quiet, but it is certainly not an airliner level. You're not going to put your Bose noise canceling headset on, listen to music, okay? It, it's a little bit louder than what you're probably used to. If you're sensitive, you want to wear some earplugs, just ask our crew, they'll get you squared away. And you're also going to wear headphones when you're flying with us today. So you'll be able to hear everything going on, and those also do a fair amount of noise canceling. Okay? If you have the high, again, it's a beautiful day, it's not hardly a bump in the sky, a little bit of light chop on the other side of the pass. If you at all feel queasy and, and feel like maybe you're getting air sick, you know what the most common mistake for somebody who gets air sick is? You wait too long. You think, I can muscle through this. I'll be fine. I can do this. And then you start thinking about it and you focus on it. If you have any inkling at all, ask our crew for the blue six-sack bag. It's a, it's a blue envelope with a white bag in it. That way you're, you're, you're there and you've got it set. If you have to use the bag, no big deal. You get a souvenir ticket. All right? If you don't use the bag, then you have to stay and clean it up. So not, not a good option. So make sure you've got it if you need it. And, and again, I don't anticipate that today, but just in case. Okay? Uh, no smoking allowed on, on board the airplane. No weapons allowed. So if you have weapons on board, see our crew. All right, with, with your CR crew, the whole employee check. Um, seat belts. So on the aft part of the airplane, we've got normal, they're uh, Cessna style modern seat belts. Very straightforward how they work. Make sure you understand, and again, our crew will help you if you have questions, because you want, want to know most, most importantly how to get out of it. And you'll, of course, have to have them belt it to take off the plane. Okay? In the front of the airplane, we have a few, a combination of both new style and old. There's several seats that have the old military style seat belts. It's a metal tang and a female receptor and a, a single lever clasp that clicks down and locks it all together. Again, our crew, uh, both our team and Chris can help you with how to get those situated. But most importantly, make sure you know how to move that clasp and unlatch the whole thing so that you can quickly get out of your seat. Okay. Um, special attention area. So you're going to see they got this big long tube that connects the front half of the airplane to the back half of the airplane. Yes, in World War II, 18 year olds used that like nobody's business. They scamper through it like a hamster tube. All right. Today in flight, we're not going to do that. All right. We don't want to get anybody stuck up there or anybody, you know, in a panic up there. Um, it's it's an interesting experience. So when we get back from the flight, if you want to try it, just tell our crew and we'll let you go ahead and go through the tube from front to back or back to front. It is pretty much a special experience, but in flight we don't do that. Okay, on the flight deck, um, you can't cross from uh, the behind the flight deck to forward the flight deck between the two of us, the two pilots. Bombardier, you're going to stay in your seat the whole flight, and that's a good thing because if you get out, someone will take it. All right, so you, you stay there, and everybody else in the forward compartment stay behind the two pilot station. You can't cross between the two. Okay. Um, talked about takeoff. Talked about landing. Uh, what am I missing? Can't think of that. Okay. Oh, I talked about the phones. Uh, no, all right. I think that's all the important safety items. Most importantly, any questions from any of you? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This is long, long ago declassified. <laughs> Since the Russians <laughs> copied it in 1947, it came out with their own TU-4 that was an identical copy of this. It's been declassified. So, <laughs> they take all the pictures. Any other questions? All right, any veterans with us today? Outstanding. Big part of why we do this is to honor veterans, not only the veterans that served 80 years ago, but our veterans of all decades and today as well. So thank you for your service. What'd you do? I was Air Force uh, crew chief. Crew chief. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Most of all, crew chief. 43 years in steel working. Oh, that's wow. fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. That's very cool. You over Hill? Yes. 16 flight camp. Very uh, cool. Very cool. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Sir. Gunship pilot in Vietnam. Oh my Huey. goodness. Huey gunships. That's fantastic. Thank you for your service. Yeah, that's great. Any other vets? Oh. <laughs> Pat? Yeah. What'd you do? Uh you still do. Navy Hunts? Yeah, still do. Where are you at? Nice. We work. Yeah. Joe. You do? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you flip? <laughs> See who gets what seat? That's great. Thank you for your service and awesome that you're over here doing this. All right, anybody with special affiliations to B-29, family members, uh, great aunts, uncles, great grandparents, and flew them, built them, sir. Exactly. B-29, I'm Oh, wow. Well, hopefully this experience, it's a very emotional one, especially for somebody like yourself, to get you that next level of connection with the DC that your dad did, Dave, to Mr. Chief. Thanks for the time. Anybody else? All right, we're going to do a group picture. Brett's here to take our, our photo. Where do you want us, Brett? I know we're going to go fly. Sound good? <laughs>